X-Men First Class. Yes, I still continue my X-Men series review leading up to, of course, X-Men Apocalypse, which is right around the corner. Reviews are already in, so I kind of had to speed up with my X-Men reviews. But now, let's talk about the first film in the new X-Men trilogy, X-Men First Class. Now, I gotta be honest. I have not seen this movie in a theater because, number one, the advertisement were terrible, the marketing was terrible, the two posters look like the fine art that you will see online. Heck, the Photoshop that I made in last year in my Photoshop class looked better than the posters for this film. And it, like I said, the trailers were terrible. The posters looked like you could find those on the fine art. It looks so Photoshopped. The marketing for this movie is terrible. We will probably get a movie that will be probably worse than X-Men Origins, but surprisingly, it wasn't. X-Men First Class is a breath of fresh air from those last two X-Men films that were kind of bleh. But don't get me wrong, this movie is not perfect at all. This movie has a ton of problems when it comes to the effects, which in this film are kind of mediocre. Some of them are great. It's like when Magneto lifted the plane in the final action of that film. That looked awesome, but I'm talking about as far as the makeup effect and the CGI of Emma Frost, which I will get to right now. The CGI on Emma Frost has one to be the worst CGI ever in a comic book film. I mean, it looks so laughable and fake. Even though X-Men Origins Wolverine had crappy special effects, this movie honestly has better effects than that film. And really, they really improved on the CGI just a little bit. Just a little bit. But the practical effects will get you right now. Now, let me just get this out the way right now. I hate the way Beast looks in this film. He looks like a Thundercat has sex with a Smurf. He looks god awful. The effects on Mystique are okay at some points. It was, it's alright, but I like the effects, her makeup effect in the first three X-Men films. Which, this is one thing that X-Men Last Stand did better than this film. The, the makeup on Beast with Kelsey Grammer looks better than the effects on Beast in this film. That's the only thing that X-Men The Last Stand has something over this film. For everything else besides that, this movie beats the crap out of X-Men The Last Stand. It beats the, definitely beats the crap out of X-Men Origins. And, it, and unfortunately, it beats the crap out of the first X-Men. But does it beat the crap out of X-Men 2? No. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Like I said, this movie has a ton of problems that X-Men 2 is a much better film than this film. But X-Men Days of Future Past will get to soon. And what I really, really loved about this film is that I've always wanted to see an X-Men film with a younger Magneto and a younger Professor Xavier to see before Eric Lencher became the great Magneto or to see Charles Xavier become Professor X. I've always wanted to see that in this film before they became rivals. I've always wanted to see that and it works very well in this film, which honestly, let's, let's just be, I'm just going to be honest here. This is not really an X-Men movie in my opinion. I see this film as a Magneto film because this movie is basically focused on Magneto and his revenge on Sebastian Shaw who killed his mother when he was younger. I do gotta say, the Magneto subplot with him wanting to kill Sebastian Shaw for killing his mother works very well with this film. It actually fits with the plot as long as it doesn't feel forced in. It works very well with this film and yeah, this is kind of like a solo Magneto film as long as the subplot is necessary. As long as it works with the film and the story in general, then yeah, this is the so, this is the Magneto Origins movie, better than Origins Wolverine. Ugh. And I kind of like the trend with these new X Men films that they're period piece films that First Class took place in the 60s, Days of Future Past took place in the 70s, and now Days of now excuse me Apocalypse is taking place in the 80s, and the next X Men film after Apocalypse will take place in the 90s. Which, I gotta say, you can stop right there since the first X-Men film took place in 2000. So, you could just really just stop right there. Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but you could just really end it with the last film after Apocalypse. So, it will make more sense. So, yeah. This movie definitely reminds me a lot of Captain America the First Avenger. Because, both of them are period films. And it had the style and the era down of that decade. Like, this movie takes place, like, in the 40s. And this movie takes place in the 60s. So, both of them had that 60s, 45 to it. Especially with Captain America, the first Avengers. Which, it's not that great of a movie, honestly. But this movie is way better than this film. And this is an MCU film. One of their earlier films. So, yeah. And finally, we finally get to see the yellow and blue jumpsuits from the original 1960s X-Men comics in live action. And it was definitely 
worth the wait because I'm tired of seeing the X-Men and the black leather suits in the original trilogy. Give them their freaking original costumes already. Which that's what that's what X-Men Apocalypse is doing, which I saw Cyclops in his comic book outfit, which looks awesome by the way. So can't wait for Apocalypse now. Finally get a good X-Men film after eight years after X-Men 2. So we had a crappy X-Men film, which is X-Men Last Stand, and a terrible X-Men film, which is X-Men Origins Wolverine. So it was a good wait to get an actual good X-Men film. And I hope they won't I hope Fox won't screw it up. Again, which I really hope not, but they butchered another famous comic book franchise. Despite some of the things that I really didn't like about this film, there are less cons than there are pros, because there are a lot of pros in this film, which, why am I doing this like, um, like having a guitar in my hand? <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyways, X-Men First Class is a breath of fresh air. It is a great surprise. This movie is way better than the last two X-Men films we had at the time, and unfortunately it's better than the first X-Men film, but nothing can beat X-Men 2. Except for Days of Future Past, which that review is coming soon. I'm gonna give X-Men First Class an A-. minus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will be back with my review of The Wolverine tomorrow. So, what do you think of X-Men First Class in the comment section down below? If you are new to my channel, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.